Welcome everyone to another update. One thing I was hiding from you is that the touchpad was not working awesomely by default anyway here in Linux. While you saw in this video the pointer was working, it was not working awesomely. This was also the case with the ThinkPad videos when something in Linux was not 100% perfect by itself out of the box. I did not usually point it out like the end of the world. So actually when I get these machines for two or three weeks to test, of course I try to get machines that I think are nice and usable and, and useful and matching to me. I'm not choosing models to find problems for vendors. So the issue with the touchpad was that it was acting like a basic mouse. So you could move the mouse pointer but you only had left and right click and no scrolling and no multi-touch gestures and such. Of course you can work like this and I worked like this for some days. It was of course not awesome. Obviously things like two finger scrolling make things work much more awesomely and smoothly and comfortable. And this kind of things are also why I actually make these YouTube videos. Ideally I want to fix and improve things with this AdSense revenue which currently is only two to three dollars a day so still not earning much here with this open source work. And let's see to show you this. By the way the text is a little bit small. Huh? The interesting thing what many people don't know, many of these keyboards and touchpads in many other laptops and also the Microsoft Surface are actually not attached with USB or PS2. They are nowadays often attached with I2C and actually rather simple bus usually used in embedded systems for power reasons and things like this. It's of course funny. You have this super complex core i7s and then your touchpad and keyboard is I2C connected. Let's see if we have this in the log to show you what log boot old I hope or did we reboot wait a second I maybe it is even in the dmask I square C stuff matched here a mouse driver and touchpad so mouse ear here so that is a problem I hope it's somewhat visible and this human interface device HID generic stuff here on I square C is attaching the Dell touchpad here, um, the 6CB7A13 and they by the way apparently share USB IDs for I square C as well as mouse and touchpad and somehow on both and when I saw this the uh, first or second day when I realized the touchpad was not working awesomely I thought this is probably the problem that it's attaching both and the mouse is taking precedence or something but I did not bother to look into this for a week or nearly two. And I was actually wondering if I really should invest this time because everyone always tells me I should use Ubuntu, Debian, Red Hat and SUSE and whatever and not my stupid T2 because everywhere else everything works. And see here, here are bug reports from when is it 2017 but I also found the other stuff from 2014 but I found there already stuff much older and there were also some funny things like I should blacklist this I square C HID and if there is no packet sent early to this touchpad then it would actually fall back to some PS2 mode or something. I tried this, it didn't work for me and uh, stuff like this and then eventually I found here that there is a new driver RMI HID for Synaptics and that is supposed to support this special synaptic flavors directly. And I had this of course configured and loaded and I tried to manually bind and unbind and whatsoever, it didn't help, didn't work. And now I patch this kernel driver here, very simple. As you see already prepared for committing here, I square C RMI Dell, simply adding the device ID here the 6CH7A13 that you have seen earlier and this simple patch makes this to work. I already compiled this. As you can see we now have two finger scrolling, tap and double, triple click and everything and yeah I wonder why this kind of things not work. Why is it that here some self-employed managing director of an IT company needs after a year, two or three years patch this stuff, similar to this Retech codec stuff, where apparently nobody cared that the headphone output was lacking bass. And um, yeah, this is really strange in my opinion. This is uh, not the best side from open source that things do not just work out of the box. 
I wish more often it would work out of the box. But also this stuff is getting too complex, right? This is so many devices here. When you look into this, this class input, when you just look into all this many um, devices here, here are over 20, 29 input devices, sound card events, graphic card events for HDMI and whatsoever. Then here this I square C, Dell Wacom. So we have here touchpad, touch screen and who knows what. And then here the plugs for the headphone and uh, special here, even special Dell things for brightness and whatsoever. And uh, not to mention the PC speaker. But this is of course extremely crazy and in total this are even more than these are 29 input events and even more event things that, as I said, sound card and such. This is of course crazy that on top of all this PCI complexity here, we have even just so many devices just for input buttons. That is really, in my opinion, getting slightly out of hand. And of course, the things that the PC vendors are creating. I saw also in Louis Rossman's repair videos that modern MacBooks also have the touch pad connected with I2C or so. They even have some dual modes, like they start with USB for the iffy BIOS and later the OS switches them over to I2C or the other way around, something like that. But yeah, um, and then even when you Google, you even find my touchpad is not working correctly in Windows. It's also no surprise that stuff in Windows breaks with all this complexity. Not to mention that, of course, all this, I saved this here already, all this is in the ACPI tables. I was already taking a look here, disassembled this. Here was also some, what was it, I2C stuff. So that's enumerated in the ACPI tables. And all this complexity just to get your touchpad working. So, yeah, just that you know more stuff, I2C and all the modern PC stuff. And where you might need to patch and look into and what kind of things I'm doing here after work and on travel. And for you guys, don't forget to share, like and subscribe. I hope you learned something. And again, we also do this YouTube videos to have here some means of working after hours and on weekends and holidays to get all this stuff fixed and working and regressions fixed and also get this test units to check what is working in Linux and what we can patch. On a similar note, <coughs> microphone input also doesn't work but at least I couldn't get it to work. But I'm not really sure that is something I can fix in an afternoon. So give it a thumbs up for me to look into even more other codec configuration stuff. This is, by the way, the lovely Retex that we already debugged in depth. And of course, here are headphone and headset mixings, but they had no effect for me. I tried them all as sound and audio feel and other experts. I've written a multi-track recorder nearly 20 years ago, GSMP, General Sound Manipulation Program. So I know a little bit of ALSA. You can trust me, I tried all those controls and plugged everything back and forth and I could not get a microphone signal whatsoever. But again, that's something for another day.